So today I'd like to talk a little bit about capacitors. And I've got a circuit filled here, but we'll show that a little bit, a little bit later. But first thing I want to do is talk about what capacitors are. And you may have seen them. They look like these little cylindrical devices that are attached to circuit boards and electronics and other things like that. And usually they've got some kind of cap with cuts in it like that usually most of the time. What a capacitor does is it's designed to store an electrical charge. So it works similar to a battery, but it's able to hold a small amount of charge that can be released quickly. That's the advantage of a capacitor is you can store charge in a capacitor but then you can discharge it which of course means a very high current draw very quickly you can't pull that off with a battery or anything without it getting very hot and having dangerous amounts of current coming out of it capacitor you can do that with and an example of something where that would be needed is the compressor units usually outside your house that are part of your heating and air conditioning system they have a starting capacitor for the motor in those units that provides the extra bit of juice to help that motor get started when the device you know has a demand on it when it needs to start up because otherwise usually the motor can't turn when it starts and the most common issue is you'll hear a buzzing noise coming from the motor it's a sign that the starting capacitor failed so that's one use of where capacitors are. Now, I've got a simple circuit here and we're kind of just going to show how capacitors work and a couple of other things. Uh, when I do another segment on diagrams and stuff, we'll really talk about the uh, how capacitors are written in those diagrams and also what tends to happen with calculation-wise when the capacitors are in series and parallel with each other. Now we'll show parallel here if we can, I'll have to redesign the circuit a little bit. But right now, I've got it set up for just one capacitor. So what I've done is, is I've got a switch push button with a meter so we can see the current. And we've got a red LED light emitting diode with a 10,000 ohm resistor attached to it and a separate on-off switch. We have a 3 volt voltage source supplying the voltage to the circuit. And so... With the switch in the off position for the LED, oh, obviously nothing happens. When I switch it to the on position, I get a complete circuit and the light comes on. Now, capacitors are always usually put in parallel with the device that's going to power. So, and capacitors are always measured in something called farads. And like resistors and inductors and other devices, the larger this unit, the more it can store. So this is 470 microfarads. So in comparison to this one, if I turn it the right way, it's 100 microfarads. So this one can store charge a lot more than this one can. So this can store a higher capacity of charge. And whatever device this is powering will last longer off of it versus this. So. We'll take our 470 microfarad capacitor and we will put it in parallel with our device here. And notice that it has a positive sign. You always want to install capacitors incorrectly, just like a diode. Because if you install it the wrong way, you can actually cause these to fail. And they won't work properly. So, we install it in parallel right in the middle there. Now, I would turn this switch to off, but we should see the needle on the meter move because when we complete the circuit on this side with the capacitor, what we're doing is charging up the capacitor. So the capacitor will draw a current, but then as it charges up, that current will decrease until it goes to zero, in which case it'll be fully charged. The voltage of the capacitor will be matching the voltage source that it's connected to. So then we complete the circuit and the meter goes up and then you see the needle go down to zero after a short while. And I let go of the button, the capacitor is now fully charged. Now I just need to discharge it with a load. 
So we'll go over to the circuit on this side. This is the own circuit. And when I turn the switch on, the charge will discharge out of the capacitor to the resistor and LED. And we will drain the capacitor down. So I turn the switch on. The LED comes on, stays on for a little bit, and then it continues to get dim and dim until there's no charge left in the capacitor, and now the capacitor is fully discharged. So the capacitor took some charge off the voltage source, it stored it in the capacitor, and then we discharged it using an LED. So that's how a capacitor works. It's just a unit for storing charge. Now, like I said, I'm going to show how capacitors work in parallel. So, let me quickly redesign this circuit here so we can support multiple capacitors on there. So, I quickly reconfigured this circuit and extended this out. So, now we've got two points where we can connect two additional devices. And actually, I realized this is a 1000 ohm resistor I put on the circuit here, not a 10,000 ohm resistor. But I will also show what changing the resistor value does to how long that LED will stay lit when we discharge the capacitor. But let's talk about that issue with the farads. You know, the difference between using one with a higher value versus a lower value. So this is the 100 microfarad capacitor. I so showed you the 470 microfarad capacitor here when we charged it up and then discharged it through the LED. So now I'm going to hook this 100 microfarad up in parallel and we're going to compare how long the LED stays on versus that 470 microfarad one. So it's all connected up here. Let me charge it up. Now notice it went up and then went back down really quick. The smaller size capacitor didn't have to take as long to charge up. Again it's a smaller value. It doesn't have as much charge capacity as this other capacitor, so it doesn't take as long to charge up. Now, when we go over here to the LED, when I discharge it through the LED, it should equally discharge as quick, or it will discharge faster because there's not as much capacity to hold a charge in there. So I'm going to turn the switch on. And the LED comes on and then goes out pretty quick. Again, not a lot of charge there in that capacitor with that capacity. So, we show shown the difference in duration with a larger versus a smaller capacitor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put these two capacitors together in parallel. So I'm going to put this one right next to it. Now when capacitors are put in parallel, their total capacitance is added together. So we have a 470 microfarad capacitor and we have a 100 microfarad capacitor next to it. So we have a total of 570 microfarads of capacitance here. So that would be our equivalent capacitor. If we wanted to reduce this on a diagram, these two capacitors would just become one 570 microfarad capacitor here. That's how we would do that on a diagram. So now that we have more capacitance, we can hold a higher amount of charge and the LED should last longer than with either of these capacitors by themselves. So now it's all hooked up, make sure the switch is in the off position there. I'm going to charge the capacitors up. And notice this time that the needle stayed up most of the time and then started coming back slowly. So that indicates that we do in fact have more capacitance there. So we have a much higher level of charge. Now I'm going to go over again to this circuit and I'm going to turn the switch to the opposition. And the LED stays on. Again, with 100 microfarads additional capacity to the 471, the difference is a little subtle to really notice it. But the LED did stay on for just a little bit longer than the 470 by itself. Again, that's because we have a bit more capacitance, more charge can be stored. So again, that was a little segment here on capacitors. Again, we'll look at it more when we get into diagramming and we'll also talk about how they function in series.